All right, here's a second video in adding all those modifications to get the ghosts. Uh, the next one on the list was make the ghost randomly decide to fire down on the player every once in a while at the, the funny angle, right? Not quite straight down, but random angles. So let's go into the ghosts. And it's going to be very similar to what you just did with the boss. We can go into the step event. A little bit of code. And let's see if the ghost is going to fire. So I random range. Let's just say uh, 1 to 100. You can change all these odds later on if you don't like them, right? Make the game harder, easier. If it's a 1, Luke the laser. Instance create at the ghost's X and Y position. Make a... Oh, and look at that. I don't have a ghost laser yet. So I better make my ghost laser. Sprite. Create sprite. Sprite. Laser red. You can go inside of your all level resource folder. Level 3 should have it in there somewhere. There's the red laser. Let's make the object. Laser red. Give it the right sprite. There we go. Object laser red. Okay, back to the ghost. Step. Object laser red. Notice again, right? Changing color is always good. It means you've named something that the program knows about. Okay, let's tell Luke. Give it a speed. Let's give it a direction. Now for this one, right, it wasn't going to be straight down. We wanted to have a little bit of a random direction. So it's not as easy to predict. So again, you can use the I random range. And the range it wanted was from 260 to 280. Give it a little bit of an angle range, right? So it's harder to play the game. Okay, and that's it. That should randomly shoot some lasers down at us. So let's give this a go. Ooh, you can see what we forgot to do. Lasers look a little funny. Since the graphic for the laser was sideways, we have to remember to turn that laser, even though it seems to be working. Let's turn that laser to face the right way. Now, this one may be a little trickier here. Whoops. Set the image angle equal to. Now, don't pick another random number. If you pick another random number, it's going to randomly pick an image angle. What we want to do here is set the image angle equal to Luke's direction. Okay, that laser that was just made. And so set the angle to match the direction, and then we should have proper looking graphics. Okay, not bad. They probably don't fire enough, right? So before I leave here, I'm just going to change that to something like 40. Okay, make it a little harder later on. Okay, next one. When the ghost laser hits the ground or leaves, because you'll see here my room doesn't actually have a ground, I need a way to destroy that laser. And in the instructions, it sort of gave you a new method, which said red laser. It asked you to add add event, other, outside room. It's not a good idea to let things live and continue living outside the room. Uh, if the game runs for a long time, you end up getting millions of things outside the room and your program is going to slow down and stall eventually. You can try leaving a program running for you know an hour if you want to see the effects. Now, when outside the room, we just want to destroy ourselves. So just a nice, simple instance destroy. No effect needed because you don't even see it. It's outside the room. Because that was a nice simple step there. Okay, with a new event.
Okay, we got to take care of that laser hitting the player and taking off a little life. So we'll say we'll take off, you know, 10 life off of the player. So let's go to the player. Let's add a collision with the red laser. I bet you're getting good at this code now. You probably don't need help with these so much. First thing we want to do is destroy that laser. So with other, instance destroy. And now we got to take down the player's life by 10. Now, of course, we're coding inside the player. So you can directly just say life equals life minus 10. Okay, not too bad. Now, may as well just check that, see if it's working. I'll have to use my ultimate skills here to get hit. And it looks like okay. Obviously, you can make some sounds or explosions along with that, right? But I'll let you do that on your own time. Looks good. And you can see I can get into the negative. The next mod obviously is going to ask me now to detect when I hit zero. So, it's exactly where we want to be. We just took the life down by 10. Now what we want to do is we want to check to see if the life has gone below or equal to zero. And if so, we'll show a little message and do the restart game command. So here's our quick little check. If the life variable has gone less than or equal to zero, we can show a message with our little show message command. Game over. Click to restart. This message will sit there. It'll pop open a box. When they click the button, it's then going to continue in the code. And that's not the command. The command that I gave you was probably game restart. That's what happens when you get old and you try to go off of memory. Game restart. Now, when you do the game restart, it actually just literally reruns the program. All The whole room's made again. Variables are reset. You know, everything's gone. So it's just a fresh game for a simple closure here. When we give this a go, how fast can I destroy myself? One more. Game over, click to restart. And the game restarts. Now later on you'll obviously learn how to, you know, add extra rooms and title screens and hop around, but for now that's pretty good. Now, we have another one or two here, the last two, the health pack and destroying the ghost, dropping down a health pack. Okay. We actually need a health pack object, so we quickly have to make it. Create sprite. Sprite. Health pack. I may as well grab the heart. That makes sense. Center the image. Make my object. Object health pack. Give it the heart. <coughs> now the health pack, when the player touches it, destroys, and they get some health. 25 health, but they don't actually get to go over 100. So let's add that one in here. Add event. Oh, let's not do anything in the health pack. Let's go right to the player. Player's a nice place to do this. Add event. Collides. With health pack. Now, just what I was about to do there. You could code it. Health pack collides with player. But in the end, I've been keeping most of my code here inside of the player. It's nice if you could just keep it all in the player, nicely organized. Okay, much easier to manage and view your program. Player collides with a health pack. We need to destroy the health pack. Whoa, that's not very good. Instance destroy. And I need to give the player some life. Life is life plus 25. Now you have to remember, if the player was at 90, this is now going to put them above 100. So we'll do a little check here. We'll max them out so they can't go over 100. 
and those checks were just with simple if statements. And a typical one is if life is bigger than 100, you put the life back to 100. So for a split second there, it's over 100, maybe. But before we ever get to see it on the screen, you instantly put it back to 100. Okay. That's it. Let's give it a little go. Oh, to test this out, one useful thing you can do, since we don't have any health packs in the room, is actually plunk a health pack. Right in the room. Okay. Makes it nice for testing. Whenever you test your programs, try to make it easy on yourself so you don't have to play for too long. So, let's get hit. 90. Pick up the health pack. Back to 100. Now, if you want, you can test out. I want to get hit a lot here. So, I'm down to 40. Oh, no, this is hard. Oh, I got the health pack. Thank goodness. Beautiful. Now, the last thing with the health pack is, let's delete these ones here. That's a little cheating. We know they work. What I want to do is I want to make this so that the ghosts, when they're destroyed, chance of a health pack dropping down. So let's go to the ghosts. And we know they get hit by a blue laser, and that's where they're possibly destroyed and we got to sneak a little bit of code somewhere in here now we destroy the ghost right in here instance destroy what I'm going to do before we destroy the ghost if their life is zero is I'm actually going to do this random chance now I know I'm already inside of an if statement you have to remember that's totally fine you can't look at that and think it's confusing. Okay, you're going to do a lot of this when you do your own games. So, I've detected the life is zero. Now I'm going to do a little bit extra in here before I destroy. I'm going to pick a random number. Now it wants a 10% chance, or a 1 in 10 chance. So let's pick a number between 1 and 10. And I'll just ask if the number is a 1, I'm going to make a health pack. I'm trying to think of a name here. Harry. Instance. Create. XY. Object. Health. Pack. Hey, Harry. Spec 6. Hey, Harry. Set your direction down. And that's it. This is all inside when the life reaches zero. And you can see I do finish off with the destroy. But the last sort of dying wish of the ghost is it possibly makes one of these health packs. Now, the odds here are set to 1 in 10. I'm going to have to probably kill a few ghosts to see this happen. So I'm going to go on a firing bonanza here. Now, normally I would say change the numbers to make it much easier. Video time. I really am breaking my own rule of making the testing easier. But I'm determined here. I thought I could get lucky. Oh, there it is. Bam! And I picked up the health pack. So I hope you saw that because it actually happened. And the ghost made the health pack. So, neat little addition. You know, you can see it's up here. Now, that's where we end the Get the Ghost mods. You have some score working, uh, some other stuff. That's pretty good. Uh, hopefully you learned a little there. Hopefully you were able to do that stuff on your own without having to check out the solution file. But either way, it um, gives you a little idea how games slowly build up more and more code. And you can actually do quite a few good game tasks so far for only having a couple lessons. Thanks for watching.